Hi, uh, thank you for attending this uh, section. Today I want to talk about the AI in early detection and diagnosis of Q stroke. My name is Stephen Wong from Houston Methodist and Child Center, a professor at Wild Cornell also. So stroke is uh, really a, uh, a a major problem. The number one two cause of death, 800,000 per year, the third cause of disability in US. And 80% of stroke are acute, uh, acute stroke, ischemic acute stroke. And since 2015, stroke in all form are treatable, actually. So stroke is not a diagnostic, it's not a treatment issue, actually. It's more a diagnostic time is spring when we treat the stroke. And What's the challenge of a stroke, actually, uh, detection? The currently, the non contrastity being used in uh, most of the ER room and clinical site. And the problem is the, it's very hard to see the ischemic changes unless the infarct is large. And the no detection rate of ischemic stroke coverage, 30%, with, it's only 30% three hours. And, and, and noisy data, if you look at the non contrast CT images. Lead of stroke specialist, in a hospital also an issue and diffusion MRI is a, is a gold standard unfortunately uh, is only available during in the hospital after you are admit, admitted it's more for monitoring purpose in the ER room actually emergency room go no go stroke call tendency we miss 30 percent and unfortunately we miss 20 percent uh, we overcall 30 percent and miss 20 percent we need roughly we are actually triple call 50 percent are wrong and the issue is here, we wonder whether we can leverage AI to, to, ask, to, to detect the stroke and deliver the right therapy to the right patient at the right time. And this is the th premises of this research. CD deloising uh, traditional is based on the gold standard, right? Different amount of loys add, added into a method to remove the loys are compared. And uh, this approach has been tried, but it's not very successful. Our, our idea is uh, really multiple CT for the patients can be leveraged to create gold standard. And then we implement using a, uh, a skip residential encoder, decoder, group convolution network, or some kind of a deep learning network we had uh, developed. And this gives some idea what uh, what, what that means. Uh, if you look at uh, the, the, the average is the patients, uh, and this is the, the patient data on over time. And we get uh, leverage the, every patient over here, the mean, and this is the noise. And this is the, the mean value of the temporal data. So the, the, the trick of this particular scheme is you need available with time series data for the CT, non contrast CT of the patients. And how we do the, to build a model, we have a stroke a registry here at Methodist. We pick about 225 patients. All, all together about 463 uh, scan. And then we have 18 patients. Uh, we choose 18 patient uh, data with 83 scan and as a training set and they split about 80, 20. And then after training, we're using modeling, uh, modeling that for testing for the, uh, the rest of 307. And this, I'll show you some results. This is a training set data. These are noisy and uh, long contrast CT data. This is after deloising. Remember deloising means that we remove the noise, but we keep the signal. It's not buried. So the, a lot of fine detail architecture is still there. And average after seven scan, and this is as test cases, you can see the tr tr uh, drastic contrast of it. And they give you a cases, these are the actually missed cases. Uh, when people look at the long quantity originally, uh, this is zero hour, 11 hours, 20 hours, and 26 hour. And we're using our case, and you can see the quality and you can pick up the area of a stroke uh, that you will normally miss in the in the low CCT. And this another missed cases, uh, in this case, 4 gene increase 1.6 1. 1. times. And the quality of it is you can see the stroke area they formerly missed in the low NCT area, uh, long contrast CT area. And we compare all this with all other published methods. Uh, and in, in general, is uh, the, the gray matter. Uh, uh, and the white matter and DG. And all these methods are method really uh, stand out in terms of signal to noise ratio and also contrast to noise ratio. Both of them are we are way above the, the other uh, reason, uh, the other method published so far. It's a very promising result. And actually, quite interesting. Um, this study actually uh, gives us uh, a little bit surprised. Um, traditional people think about big data, you need a lot of, uh, um, in, uh, a lot of training data. So 
uh, in our case, you can see I only use 18 patients. And uh, the longitudinal scan of these 18 patients, I built a very robust training data, uh, training model uh, to test, and the result is very excellent. And in fact, uh, we will argue data augmentation uh, there's a normal trick to uh, embolish your, your training data set is bad for denoising because the data augmentation, when you flip it, you, you cut it, you chop it, you rotate it, you're creating unnecessary noise to the system and get the situation worse. And how we do all these things after we've done this algorithm and and we actually implement the whole algorithm into an edge device. This is one of the LaVidia devices and uh, and transfer the data and we can and we can move this in a scanner and the edge device it basically is a portable device you can plug it into any workstation in the hospitals and one advantage of this is you can use it right away locally and secondly you don't really facing a lot of uh, data security and pri privacy issue you want to go outside the crowd and thirdly of course there's a long negotiation with the vendor the PAX vendor to integrate the workstation is a long process. In this case, in a, a portable edge device give you local control to hospital. You can use it right away. And we have been uh, we have a fire pattern already. Application for is uh, is pending right now, and we are doing a a large scale clinical trial with Methodist on this model. We, the second one I actually uh, look at a stroke is a complicated problem, right? I saw that one immediate problem is long contrast CT. Uh, they're facing uh, facing today in imaging, but reality is uh, there are many other ways. Physicians look at image, also look at the uh, behavior, facial, voice, or the or the patients. So I think about uh, I, I don't know if you remember this sitcom, The Good Place. Uh, this is a very smart uh, resistant uh, assistant called Janet, and he almost all knowing. If you ask all questions, I wonder whether we can build a so-called intelligent Janet by with all the information we have today in the digital technology, face, speech, imaging, body movement, all these things, and you can help to de detect stroke. And that's how the idea of we develop a concept of deep stroke. And this is really an efficient screening framework. Uh, originally, right now, we are starting from ER room, eventually we want to move out to the, to the outpatient clinics and the center. And that's the, the interesting area is, uh, this is the area that you do facial and then you do uh, voice and you can do the multimedia advers adversary deep learning and then you detect it. This is a general framework. Uh, this is a much more complicated uh, uh, approach. Typically, uh, there's a standard of care. We're using a cookie jar, a story and some other story like this to have patient to read, suspected patient to read a story. And based on how they read it, the word you use, all kinds of things, and we detect whether the patient has struggled or not. At the same time, we look at the 3D frame for the patient, the movement. We are not looking for drastic cases. Drastic case, everybody can detect it. We, the most cases we misdiagnosis or misdiagnosis are those uh, subtle, moderate cases. And this is the one we need to take care of it. And, and we are looking for those cases. We look at the movement, 3D or the frame. And this is uh, this approach actually uh, also have joined together. So we put the, the voice part into a spectrum. And this spectrum will join it together. It's an audio module and also the video module, video processing module together. And eventually it comes to a loss function for each one to measure the right and wrong. And this is the preliminary result using our district app. Uh, we, we enroll about 100, enroll 151 patients. This is a demographic. And this is a result of the comparing result with the baseline. A line means that we, uh, this is, as I say, this clinical impression is an ER doc. ER doc has everything. Yes, the imaging, you see the patient, touch patient, all kinds of things. There's a, whatever, they will make a decision. As I told you, we missed about 50%, right? Uh, early on in the stroke cases, it's 53% in terms of specificity in ER, ER doc. So we align everything to, to we are with that. In this particular case, uh, we actually improved quite a bit compared to our, our deep stroke method, compared to the clinicians who had everything in their disposal. We're using audio and video alone. We achieve about a 6% uh, improvement, it's significantly improved. And AUC curve also increased to 66, uh, it's actually it cost over 10%. And uh, accuracy also significantly increased. So quite interesting uh, study. 
uh, in a sense, this, this, this type of deep shock approach can be a very useful tool for the ER docs to improve their performance significantly. So, and so we talk about this come to ER room, right? The other one is actually this same approach. Look at your facial and video. You can look at it uh, for screening for physical exam. In fact, there's a NIH a stroke scale exam. There's a standard. It's about 11 uh, standard uh, uh, process. You have the level of consciousness and orientation question, respond to command, eye glazes, visual field movement, facial movement. And each one, we, uh, the physician will spend a lot of time actually every day to go through it, probably half an hour to just screen the patients. And it's better off to do in the patient bedside. But give a score. The whole idea is AI is really about automate the process. And we take four, four of these tasks that can be automated easily and then incorporate it into something called in, uh, intelligent augmented life like avatar. We got e llama app. And basically, this is a flow. And this app basically have uh, consisted of the of five things. You know, we have a live, uh, live three uh, D avatar, and uh, actually can guide the patients to uh, to movement. You open it, and you look at avatar. The virtual doctor will talk to you, and go for each step. And the the the, the patient, and and it is in the meantime, the the video will capture the the facial and movement all kind of the do the pattern recognition computer vision action in real time and measurement so we do the past past things i'll give you some of the simple workflow task one two three i mentioned early on eye glazings in right right uh, right left all these things and we can different combination we we look at that what's it normal not normal and you can measure it uh, instantly smile let's uh, look at this uh, task number two number three whole hands whether you have a movement of the hand and it's actually using your iPhone, iPhone actually you can take it, take advantage of the rotation accelerations. And you also touch a nose three times. This is coordination work, one of the tasks of an NHS score. And whether you're right, right movement, this one, for example, causes perfect, uh, per perfect score. And this is the one purposely try to off your zero. The computer can actually uh, real time detect it. And then you can do walk in the street line. This is a really a coordination walking, right? Your, your, your go movement. And then you can uh, you look, you take advantage of the acceleration, the gyroscope data, and, and also initial forward, and you count five steps, score to no rotation and rotation, a different score. And you can quantitate deep movement measurement. So end of the day, after you all these computer will generate all these results, and they send it to the physician, who may be in the best side, take care of the patient in emergency cases. And they can look at this data and decide what's the next step to do. So this, this, uh, this type of app uh, take advantage of the deep shock part of the features and really uh, screen the patient for, for sus uh, suspicion using the standard NIH scale. Uh, have, a, have a 3D doctors kind of talk to the patient. So you have a good, more patient, physician type of interactions and automatically and agree the patients and so give give time back to the physician frankly and and uh, so application to other exam you can imagine this approach you can do for checkup screening in fact you can do it for physical therapy and we right now we do a large scale uh, IL we are we applied the ILB already we are planning for a large scale clinical trial on the patients probably 500 to 1000 ranged so yeah, quickly, I, I want to uh, give you some idea. This is the uh, study uh, we have done. And I, I, I would like to thank uh, my team, especially uh, Kevin Wong, who spearheaded this project technically, and, and also the Stroke Center, uh, particularly to the director, John Wobie, who worked to, uh, with us closely on this project, exciting project, and my previous uh, students, well as professor at Penn State. And financial support is a child center, Dunn, Skillock, and Johnson Estate. Thank you very much. This is my talk.